Hello there, friends, and welcome or welcome back to the series where I'm completing an Animal Crossing island in 30 days. And today is kind of a huge day for us on this journey because today marks the halfway point of this challenge, which is insane. But as always, just in case you're joining us, these are the rules that we've laid out for this island. And with that, let's jump right into day 15 on Adelwood. Now, as we kind of wander around the island here, I would like to revisit the rules and kind of use today as an opportunity to talk about where we are in the challenge, what I've learned so far, my thoughts, and what we still have left to do for the challenge. So first things first, we have all of the rules we set up for this island. Now, I didn't put our rule about time traveling and treasure islands being allowed because there's not really anything to check off with that rule. But I've got the other four rules on screen here, which are to decorate every tile on the island. Builds cannot be changed once they're completed. We have to have 10 villagers that are all from the mood board and our island must have a five star rating. As of this point in the challenge, Shep, what is that? As I was saying, at this point in the challenge, we have decorated about the front one third of our island, maybe a little bit over a third. Eh, yeah, I, I think I would safely call it we've decorated probably about a third of our island if we're not including the beaches. So we obviously have some more to cover on that front. We cannot check that off yet, but let's go ahead and check in with Miss Isabel while we're here and see what our island rating currently stands at. Let's see, let's talk island evals. Remember our goal at the end of the 30 days is to have a five star island and hey, I am very pleasantly surprised with that four star rating. Let's see what she tells us to improve from here. So I kind of know what I need to include more of in our other builds. The island's natural environment. Okay, so we probably need more like, oh, tree varieties. Interesting. Okay, I guess I bet that probably need means that we need more fruit trees. Anyways, as we work on the more like rural kind of outskirts parts of the island, we'll use a lot more flowers and we'll have some apple trees and stuff. So I think that that should be pretty easy to handle. Famous last words. All right. And speaking of, let's see here. We need 10 villagers all from the mood board. So we have Gonzo, Billy, Deirdre, Bones, Anchovy, Shep, Olive, Blair and Biscuit. However, Eugene has to go. And I think I have decided that we are going to say farewell to our cute friend Biscuit in favor of also bringing Kiki to the island because she is very beloved in the comment section of all these videos I've been putting out. People really want to see her on the island and so do I. Let's go ahead and kind of work on moving the two of them onto the island. I think it's only fair to start with Molly because she did win the poll, so she needs to come on first and oh my gosh, wait, what? Let's go ahead and see who our campsite villager is then. I totally forgot that Isabel had mentioned in our morning announcements that we had a campsite villager. Sorry, Olive, excuse me. All right, if this is Molly or Kiki, I'm gonna be thrilled. This is gonna be hilarious. Oh, hey, who are you? Victoria, oh, you're a cutie. You're like brown with like some little like orangish reddish streaks in your hair. You are a cutie, but alas, not on the mood board. So without further ado, let's go ahead and invite Miss Molly for her first round at our campsite. All right, so Molly's officially on her way. And that means let's run and grab our workbench and all of our stuff so that way we can go ahead and have that set up right next to the campsite to make this process just a little bit easier for ourselves. Also, as we're running by Shep here with his thought bubble, I wanted to share another little tip with you guys that I've learned in playing Animal Crossing. If you walk in and out of a building and the same villager still has a thought bubble, it means that this is 100% a they're going to ask to move out bubble. If hypothetically his bubble had been gone after we walked out of resident services, then it would have just been them asking to like play a game with them or invite them over to our house or something like that. But if you avoid talking to your villager with the thought bubble, the thought bubble will pop around to the other villagers on your island. So if you're trying to get a specific villager to move off and you see that someone else on your island has this little thought bubble, just ignore them. We don't technically need it to move around to anyone else. I just don't want to acknowledge that Shep wants to leave this beautiful island. All right, and hello there, Miss Molly. We're definitely gonna have to change that dress because that dress is very cottagecore, springcore. 
Oh, a wooden box seat? We can do that. But yeah, her outfit is definitely too cute and springy. That's another thing I would really like to do with all the villagers on the island is I would really like to gift them all like custom outfits so that way they wear more like fall aesthetic outfits. I have heard that unfortunately they won't wear outfits I've gifted them in the dream address, which kind of sucks. Um, I don't know if that's like 100% confirmed or not, but just in case... Okay, a wooden block toy and 12 softwood. What do we need for the toy? 12. Okay, so we need 15 softwood. We can manage that. Here you go, Molly. Your official Edelwood custom wooden block chest. Did you just give me a beret? You gifted me a hat, Molly. Do you have a problem with Scrunkle? Because if you have a problem with Scrunkle, I don't think this will work out. You might just have to leave. Okay. I'll let it slide this time, because you're still new to the island, okay? But next time, I won't be so forgiving. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and do the two more visits. Um, I'll speed through those, and we will go ahead and move Molly onto the island, because as soon as we get her moved onto the island, we can cross off our first official thing on the checklist, which is having 10 villagers on the island that are all from the mood board. So, let's get to it. I want to check something off today. All right, now's for the moment of truth. All we have to do is keep talking to Molly until she decides she would like to live on Aylwood. <gasps> oh, why not move here, cutie pie? Um, but what I was saying is, I know that the Amiibos isn't as nearly as like entertaining or suspenseful as doing a villager hunt, but there is something very calming about the fact that I know I don't have to waste hours of my time just hoping to find the one I want. It's fun in the beginning when we have a lot of um, a lot of villagers that we're looking for, but as the island goes on, it gets kind of old pretty quickly. Eugene, it's finally time to bid you farewell. No, please, I insist, Molly. Ask them in a way that seems pushy. I beg of you. Eugene really was planning to move. No, you don't say! It's not like I threatened him. Consistently. All right, and with that, we can officially check the first thing off of our to-do list, which is to have all 10 villagers on our island that are from our mood board. All right, but now that we've got the villager situation sorted out, let's go ahead and move to talking about the builds that we have left to do on this island. Now, we've already done the build for the entrance, the farmer's market, the neighborhood, and the county fair at this point in the series. So that means we have the apple orchard and cider stand left to do, the farm, the shopping district, the lake and the forest area, the cafe plant shop record store kind of addition to the shopping district, the haunted and cryptid part of the forest where we'll have the tent, and the beaches, along with any of the fillers that we have left to do, like kind of finding a spot for the post office and the campsite. That's a little intimidating, if I'm honest. And on top of those builds, we also have a couple of extra things left that I would like to do, which is the villager home exteriors and maybe some of the interiors. So that means I'm going to have to speed run Happy Home Paradise at some point over the next couple of days, which is also very intimidating. I also need to do my house and my house interior. And I'm thinking I might try to get a villager photo. Maybe. See, all of these extra things are like, it would be awesome if we could accomplish this, but I'm not entirely sure if we're going to have time for all of that. But there's no harm in hoping and giving ourselves a couple extra goals to shoot for just in case we have the time. From a strategic standpoint, I think maybe we'll go ahead and combine some of these builds too. I don't know. I've had a couple people in the comments mention that um, that the speed build format is kind of overwhelming for them and that they don't enjoy that as much as like a more chillaxed kind of build. So I don't know. I think that maybe in the next couple of videos, I will go ahead and give another crack at trying to do a more relaxed kind of maybe just commentary as I'm building it kind of kind of speed build. I kind of gave it a try already whenever we tried to build the neighborhood and I wasn't happy with it, but I don't know. I think if you guys are okay with watching a longer form kind of build, then I could try that. This is this is a really good opportunity for me to just try out new things anyways. You know, this whole series is kind of a new thing. So 
we'll see. Maybe I'll go ahead and try that for one of the next couple of episodes. Alternatively, I could also combine a few builds, um, like we could do the apple orchard and the farm, maybe all together as one build, and we could do like the shopping district and all of those extra little villager shops all together, possibly. I think back to the, oh goodness, hi Bones. How can I help you, sweetie? Do you ever just feel like crying? Is that what he just said to me? <laughs> Bones, literally every day. Literally every day. Bones is trying to tell me that I should, in fact, be stressed that we are over halfway through this challenge and have so much left to do. Thanks for giving me a safe space to cry it out, Bones. But yeah, like back to the topic of maybe doing some slower, more like talk through kind of just chill speed builds. I think it makes more sense to do those for the small areas. So like maybe we'll do that for the different little shops in the, so in the shopping district that we do, because that'll be kind of an experimental sort of thing. I don't really have a set plan in mind for those. All right, guys, I said it. I said I don't have a plan. Everyone take a sip of your water. That's our rule. But yeah, I think that in a kind of setting like that, where we're just kind of trying some new things and trying to figure out what we like and what we don't like for the little, for the little areas, that could work really well. Something like the farm that's going to take up literally the entire back corner of our island. I don't know if that's really the plan because if in whenever I do builds like that, I like to just throw on a YouTube video or some music or something and just chill and just vibe. And I also find it way more fun to record the audio for those later because that means I get to dedicate my full attention span to the build while I'm trying to do it, you know? All that to say, I would really like to try some of the more slow, laid back kind of speed builds. So expect at least a few of those. We'll give those a try. I don't know if they're particularly my style, but I'm willing to hear them out anyways. Okay, guys, now I don't remember exactly which one of you this was, but someone in the comments mentioned that Kiki's eyes look like she's from over the garden wall. Like the kind of style of eyes that she has kind of gives her that vibe. And I will never be able to unsee that. I was... Prior to this, like, Kiki's definitely one of my favorite cats, but I wasn't, like, particularly super huge on her. She wasn't, like, my favorite cat, but I think since someone commented that and now I associate her with Over the Garden Wall, she might be my favorite little kitty. Like, just look at her. Isn't she so stinking cute? All ready for you, Kiki. Here's your first gift before we can get you to move on to our island. We will see you tomorrow, Kiki. But I don't know, I am also kind of thinking about, we might change up the neighborhood a little bit, not the build itself, so I think this should be fine, but just the villagers that we have over here. Because I did decorate this area all spooky, kind of planning on having Biscuit and Kiki be the ones that were over here. I don't know, I'm having a really hard time with, because I'm thinking Molly, she's a cute little fall girly, but I feel like she might belong more kind of in the back of the island where we're going to have the lake view and like the forest. Someone mentioned in a comment when we were talking about this dilemma that we were having with Molly and Kiki that um, that Molly seems like she would feel more at home in like a natural setting. And I think that that's a really good observation. Like, I don't feel like I see Molly in this neighborhood-ish kind of setting. So... The only way I can think to fix that is, one, I can either kick someone else out instead of Biscuit and have Biscuit and Kiki that have their cute little moment. And I think if I was to kick anyone else out, it would be Olive. Because she's another one that hasn't really grown on me that much. Like, I want to give her a little coffee shop. But that's really the only idea I have for her. So... Obviously, by the time that this video comes out, I will have made a decision and Kiki will be on the island, but I fear that I'm about to make the wrong decision because I could put Kiki's house right here and I could give Biscuit and Kiki their little spooky neighborhood Halloween moment and then I could give Molly a spot by the lake because I am kind of thinking that I don't know. I am kind of thinking that trying to do a cafe, a plant shop, and a record store is too much. I also, like, but I don't know. Because then again, I love all of those build ideas except for the plant shop. And, like, Blair, if you um, remember from when we went into her house, she would totally have a plant shop. But I don't know that a plant shop is kind of the most fall build. And that's the vibe we're going for. It feels more spring. 
So maybe, maybe I kick out Biscuit, and then I have Blair and Kiki in the neighborhood, and I have Molly her give her a cute little, like, lake house kind of thing. I think that that would be more appropriate. And then we can still give Olive and Shep their respective stores in the shopping district. You know what? I think that that's a really great idea. Anyways, I forgot what I was saying. But um, as you guys might notice while we're kind of time traveling to move these last couple villagers in, we are actually... Oh, look at the leaves in the plaza. We are actually in November, finally. Um, I know that the trees get more kind of red and vibrantly colored in like the November kind of month. So I would like... I don't know. I'm not sure whether I'm going to set the date for the DA, the dream address on Halloween or if I'll set it like kind of late November so we get the more vibrantly colored trees. I'm leaning more towards the pretty trees, but I guess we'll find out. I think that I've come to the decision that we're going to stick with Kiki kicking out Biscuit on our island. And then that way we can have Kiki and Blair as part of the neighborhood and give Olive and Shep their own little shops in the shopping district. I don't know if we had already confirmed that or not, but I was just continuing to mull it over kind of in my head. And I was like, yeah, that, that feels right. Something about it just feels right. All right. And just like that, Kiki has her second of three gifts. So let's go ahead and skip forward. What is with these villagers and giving me hats? Seriously, do you guys not like Scrunkle? You're hurting his feelings. He's sensitive, okay? Everyone needs to stop being mean to Scrunky right now. One other thing I remembered that we had talked about doing um, for this island that I now need to add to the list of things that we still have to left to do before the end of the month is I also want to make a little custom map for the island. Hopefully, um, in doing some of the rest of these builds as speed builds, I'll be able to leave myself with enough time so that way I can actually throw together a little map. Um, but if not, I mean, that can come a few days into like the start of November after we finish up the challenge. That might be a good way to kind of unwind and cap off the series too, is just for me to kind of take a few days, sit back, step away from all the editing software and things, and just draw for a little bit. But yeah, like I said, I was kind of planning on taking a short break after we upload the last episode of the 30 day challenge um, because I have been working really hard on this series like since kind of mid to late September, um, even just with the planning and stuff before I actually started filming any episodes. It's been a lot of work to put this out and I've enjoyed every minute of it. Like even on the days where I'm like, I've been editing this for like five hours. This is ridiculous. I've been doing so much work. It's still a lot of fun. So that's really helpful in keeping up my motivation to continue to work on this island. But yeah, I am definitely going to need a little bit of an Animal Crossing break after this. There's actually a couple games that I'm considering playing um, during my week, my week or so break. I probably will sit down and play some Until Dawn, like we talked about in the other day's episode. But I'm also thinking I really want to try playing um, Cult of the Lamb. I've been recommended that a lot. And I think I kind of talked about how I have this duality in me between um, cute and spooky. And I've heard that that's a very good kind of mash of the two. But also this game just released. I think it's Amber Isle is what it's called. Um, it's only on Steam, I think. I don't think it's on Switch. But it looks like Animal Crossing, but dinosaurs. And I think that that's super cool. Like, the graphics are super cute and I love it. So I'm thinking I might give that a try too. That might be something that we try out together on the channel. All of that aside, we can now officially welcome Kiki to the roster of residents here on Edelwood, which is fantastic. And let's go ahead and say hi to Miss Molly before we call it a day. We'll go ahead and time travel to move Kiki in too, I think. I feel like that's fair. Oh, Molly's house is so stinking cute. She's gonna look so cute up by the lake, honestly. Oh, hi, cutie, you're crafting. What are you up to? Oh, a hedge standy. I have some of those, but I don't have the recipe for it. So let's go for it. Thanks, Molly. But yes, don't worry, girl. We're not gonna keep you cooped up in this neighborhood for too long. We're gonna get you the lake house of your dreams. And I feel like it's only right that we go say goodbye to Mr. Biscuit. I feel so bad that he's leaving. And I had kind of cryptically mentioned that um, I had something in mind for Biscuit. I was going to send him over to Kaylee Games' channel where she's doing a 30-day Kidcore Halloween Island challenge. And she's searching for Biscuit so hard, but... 
kind of like I we have the rule that all 10 of the villagers have to be from Nook Miles tickets um, or from like amiibos and campsites and stuff. She has the same rule implemented on hers. So Biscuit unfortunately cannot go join her journey, but maybe he'll find his way over there. And if you want to check her out, I will throw her card up here too, because her series has been freaking awesome to watch if you guys haven't been watching it. But yeah, this is going to be goodbye for now, Biscuit. Have fun on your journey. And with that, let's move forward a couple days and get Kiki added as our final villager on the freaking island. This is huge, guys. Huge. All right, and just like that, we have gotten Kiki and Miss Molly moved into the island, which means we are officially done with all of the villager hunting and all of the moving in for this island. Our villager roster is complete. And for our final lineup, we have Kiki, Bones, Olive, Anchovy, Gonzo, Shep, Deirdre, Billy, Blair, and Molly, which... Honestly, I think is even cuter of a lineup than I originally had planned, so I could not be happier with how our island is coming along so far, but it's not over yet. We've still got a lot of work to do on this island. We've got some big builds to pull off and one more star to add to our island rating, which, which I think is going to be a lot easier said than done. If I remember right, that fifth star is pretty hard to get added onto our island rating. We are currently being interrupted by a balloon, but we're going to ignore that and instead focus on how freaking excited we are to finish up the rest of this island. I think tonight I might finish editing this video and go ahead and make a dent in the Happy Home Paradise DLC speed run. We'll see how long that'll take me. I'm not going to drag you guys along for that because that's kind of a tedious process. And I just kind of want to chill and have a little chill gameplay night to myself tonight, I think. But with that said, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube jazz on your way out if you want to follow along with the rest of the series. And I'm going to see you guys in tomorrow's episode. Bye! And our final lineup ended up being Kiki. Whoops, dropped my controller. That's awkward.